Dear students, I welcome all of you to this MCQ discussion session where we'll be discussing the questions which appeared in the INICT May 2022 exam. Let's start with question number one. Question number one is a match the following question. Let's take up option number A. Option number A is silver like scales which is going to match with psoriasis. Option number B, brani scales matches with pityriasis versicolor. Option number C, collarate of scale matches with pityriasis rosea. And mica-like scales matches with pityriasis lichenoides chronica. So this is the correct answer. Silver-like scales for psoriasis, brani scales for pityriasis versicolor, collarate of scales for pityriasis rosea, mica-like scales for pityriasis lichenoides chronica. Chronic plaque psoriasis, we can see you get multiple erythematous scaly plaques. And please remember students, the type of scales which you get here is silvery white scales. Silvery white scales. In pityriasis versicolor, you get fine scales. You get very, very fine scales. They're described as fine, brani, furfuracious scales. Fine, brani, furfuracious scales. In pityriasis rosea, which is an acute self-limiting eruption, which is usually triggered by HHV7, you get a scale which is within the lesion, all around the lesion, which is termed as collarate of scale. This is called as collarate of scales. Question number two. Kesowitz's law is pertaining to A. Primary syphilis, B. Secondary syphilis, C. Latent syphilis, and D. Congenital syphilis. The correct answer to this question is D. Congenital syphilis. In relation to syphilis in pregnancy, we have a law which is called as Dede Kesowitz's law. This law states that a untreated syphilitic mother tends to improve on her past performance. So when a patient is untreated, very, very important here, is untreated syphilitic mother tends to improve on her past performance. That means if there is an untreated syphilitic mother, if she goes through a series of pregnancy, what will happen to the outcome of the pregnancy? The outcome of the pregnancy will keep improving. Outcome improves with each pregnancy. Outcome improves with each pregnancy and the likelihood of infection will reduce. Outcome becomes better. Let's take an instance of this Dede Kasovitz law wherein there is an untreated syphilitic mother who goes through a series of pregnancy. First pregnancy, she may land up in abortion. Number two, second pregnancy, stillbirth, a little better. Number three, neonatal death. Number four, a living child which is unhealthy. And number five is a living child which is healthy. That means with successive pregnancies, the outcome of pregnancy becomes better. The likelihood of infection comes down. This is called Dede Kesowitz's law. Question number three, what is the treatment of choice for type 2 lepra reaction in a pregnant female who is taking leprosy treatment? Option A, stop treatment and give steroids. Option B, add steroids. Option C, thalidomide. Option number D, azathioprine. So here what you need to remember here is that we are talking about pregnancy. When you're talking about pregnancy, you need to remember thalidomide cannot be the answer because it is category etc. It is category etc. And then this is teratogenic. The question is pertaining lepra reaction. Always remember, I've told you this point in class as well. Whenever you're talking about lepra reaction, that means it is immunologically mediated episodes of acute inflammation during the chronic course of leprosy. So it's acute inflammation happening. So please remember, always in lepra reaction, continue multidrug therapy continue multidrug therapy. So stop treatment cannot be the answer. So what are we remaining with? What is the drug of choice for type 2 lepra reaction? It is systemic steroids. That's why the correct answer is add steroids is going to be the correct answer with continuation of multidrug therapy. Question number four, a boy with small sized platelets and platelet count of 20,000. See when you're talking about platelet count of 20,000, we're talking about thrombocytopenia. And small sized platelets refers to microthrombocytopenia. Presence with petechiae, malina, and atopic dermatitis. That means there are bleeding manifestations. There are bleeding manifestations. And there is atopic eczema as well. So with this background, microthrombocytopenia with atopic eczema, what should be our working diagnosis? Our working diagnosis will be Viscott Aldrich syndrome. Viscott 
Aldrich syndrome. And in Viscott Aldrich syndrome, the gene which is involved is the VASP gene. So VASP gene mutation, that is Viscott Aldrich syndrome protein gene mutation is involved over here. So that's why B is the correct answer to this question. So if you analyze this question, it was a boy which is given because usually in Viscott Aldrich syndrome is an X-linked recessive disorder. You have number one, atopic eczema, number two, recurrent infections and number three, you will have bleeding manifestations due to small sized or low platelet counts. With this background, the correct answer for this question is Viscott Aldrich syndrome protein gene mutation. That is option number B will be the correct answer for this question. A patient presented with incomplete closure of the right eye. The question is talking about lag of thalamus. The question is talking about lag of thalamus. On examination, orbicularis oculi is weak. That means seventh cranial nerve is getting involved. Cornea shows decreased sensation. That means fifth cranial nerve is getting involved. So fifth cranial nerve is sensory. Seventh cranial nerve is motor. Which of the following organism is responsible for this condition? The correct answer for this in a background of a patient, an infective agent which can involve nerves, cranial nerves like fifth cranial nerve, seventh cranial nerve produce orbicularis oculi paralysis. The correct answer to this question is mycobacterium leprae, which is option number B. Chemo prophylaxis for leprosy are given to which kind of people? Multiple correct choice option question. Option A, age more than 2 years. Option B, close contact for more than 20 hours per week. Sharing the same clothes and towels, living together for 6 months since the onset. Let us try to understand what is chemoprophylaxis. Now, chemoprophylaxis means usage of chemical agents to prevent leprosy. So, chemoprophylaxis means you are trying to prevent. It is not for treatment. Please remember, it is not for treatment. It is for prevention of leprosy by using chemical drugs. And here, we are going to use SDR. SDR stands for Single Dose Rifampicin. So, you are using Single Dose Rifampicin as a chemoprophylactic agent to prevent leprosy. Now, what is the status of SDR? In community medicine. So number one, the indication for this is contacts of leprosy. Very, very important. It is for contacts of leprosy. Number two, what age group you can give? You can give it in patients who are adults and children who are two years and above. And lastly, what should be the exclusion criteria? The patient shouldn't have leprosy, should not have tuberculosis. So two important disorders are the exclusion here. No leprosy, no tuberculosis. Now, what is the dosage of single dose rifampicin? Now, in 15 years and above, it is 600 milligrams single dose. 10 to 14 years, it is 450 milligrams. In the age group of 6 to 9 years, and if the weight is more than or equal to 20 kg, you have to give 300 milligrams. And if the age is more than or equal to 2 years, weight is less than 20 kgs, then you have to give 10 to 15 mg per kg. So please remember, it's 600, it's 450, 300 and 10 to 15 mg per kg is the correct dose of single dose rifampicin as chemoprophylaxis for leprosy. Let's move on to the WHO guidelines for contacts of leprosy. To qualify as a contact, the contact should be in close proximity for prolonged duration with a newly detected case of leprosy. So what is the guideline for this? It says that the contact should be living, working or in social activities for 20 hours per week for at least three months in the past one year. So in the past one year, for three months duration, for 20 hours per week, the contact should be in close proximity with the so-called new detected case of leprosy. So with this background, if you choose chemoprophylaxis for leprosy should be given to which patients? The correct answer will be option number A, age more than two years should be there. And number two, close contact for at least 20 hours per week. So chemoprophylaxis should be given to a person who is two years and above and close contact should be 20 hours per week for at least three months in one year. So this will qualify to be a contact and thus qualifies for chemoprophylaxis. Question number seven. A patient presented with the following lesion. He mentioned that two days before he felt a spider was crawling on his chest when he woke up. What is the diagnosis? All of you, when you look at the picture, what do you see? You see three points. Number one, you see that this is a unilateral rash. Number two, you see that it is dermatomal. Whenever you have a unilateral and a dermatomal lesion, you have to think of herpes zoster. Now, why is it mentioned that the patient felt as if a spider was crawling on his chest? Because many a times what happens is, before the rash of herpes zoster develops, patients can have paresthesias. 
paresthesia or a prodromal symptom can be there even before the rash starts. That's why the correct answer to this question is herpes zoster. Now herpes zoster we know before the eruptive phase there is a pre-eruptive phase where the patient usually has fever. He may have malaise and can have a painful prodrome just before the rash develops. In this it is mentioned as paresthesia. Spider crawling is a paresthesia. How do you identify herpes zoster? The rash is unilateral. It's dermatomal and painful grouped vesicles on red base. It's a unilateral, dermatomal, painful grouped vesicles on red base. And we need to remember that the most disabling complication of herpes zoster is always post-herpetic neuralgia. In post-herpetic neuralgia, patient is going to present with allodynia. Allodynia is a feature wherein non-painful stimulus is perceived as painful. And what is the treatment of herpes zoster? The treatment of herpes zoster is tablet acyclovir, 800 mg, 5 times daily for 7 days. Or you can also give valacyclovir, 1 gram TID for 7 days. So two options, either 5 times acyclovir, which is 800 mg for 7 days. Or you can go for valacyclovir, which is a better bioavailability drug, 1 gram TID for 7 days. Question number 8. A forest worker has a cauliflower-like lesion on the foot. So, forest worker to cauliflower-like lesion. Number three, on histopathology, what do you see? It is shown below. So, here you can see, if you identify, you see a brown, round body. You can see that it is a colored body. So, if it is a colored body, we are talking about chromoblastomycosis because a farmer with cauliflower like lesion on the foot is chromoblastomycosis. This brown round thick walled body has to be a sclerotic body also known as medlar body also known as copper penny bodies. And option number B splendor hopley phenomena is seen in sporotrichosis. That's why the correct answer to this question is sclerotic body. Question number 9. A 12 year old boy presents with fever, joint pain and rash over the hand. So we have a patient who is presenting with fever. He has got joint pain that is arthralgia and rash over his hand. So when you see this rash over the hand, what do you see? You see that these are nothing but Gottron's papules. They are Gottron's papules because number one, the rash is violet in color. They are violaceous. They are flat topped papules. And you can see the distribution. The distribution is over the MCP joint and IP joint. So as soon as you see it is in a juvenile, a 12 year old, we mark it as Gottron's papules, which is associated with juvenile dermatomyositis. Rest of the options become incorrect. Mechanics hand is also associated with dermatomyositis. Is also associated with dermatomyositis. Let us go to the cutaneous lesions of juvenile dermatomyositis. So here we have the violaceous flat top papules when they are distributed over the MCP joint and the IP joint. These are referred to as Gottron's papules, the pathognomonic of dermatomyositis. Apart from this, you can also have a violaceous rash. You can have a violaceous macular edema which is distributed over the periorbital region. So this is referred to as heliotrope rash. So violaceous macular edema, periorbital region, we call it as heliotrope rash. Question number 10. An adult patient presents with a single hypopigmented and hypoanesthetic lesion along with a single thickened nerve and a satellite lesion. What would be the treatment of this patient as per as NLEP? So this is an adult patient, single. So there is one skin lesion. There is one nerve and there is a satellite lesion. So we need to remember that satellite lesions are seen in BT leprosy. Okay, and because there is one skin lesion, it automatically becomes posse bacillary. That's what you need to remember. Now, we need to remember that there are two kits available as per as National Leprosy Eradication Program. The green kit is for posse bacillary. The maroon kit is for multi bacillary. So, before marking the answer, let us look at the background. There are some issues which are there in the guidelines for treatment of leprosy. We have the National Leprosy Eradication Program guidelines and the WHO guidelines. Let us look at the differences. According to the NLEP, skin lesions are 1 to 5 is posse bacillary, 6 or more are multi bacillary. So, this is number 1. 
In terms of nerves, it says no nerve or one nerve is possibacillary. More than one nerve is multibacillary. Smear negative possibacillary, smear positive multibacillary. So if negative is possibacillary, positive is multibacillary. In terms of WHO, what it says, the skin lesions are the same. One to five, six or more. But very, very important is according to the recent guidelines, nerves are absent. That means if nerve involvement is not there, you call it as possibacillary. Even if one nerve is involved, you have to give multibacillary treatment. So this is a little different from the NLEP guidelines. And smear negative possibacillary, smear positive multibacillary. So this is what you need to remember. This is according to the recent WHO guidelines. Even if one nerve is thickened, you're supposed to give multibacillary treatment. If you look at the Global Leprosy Strategy 2016-20, to 20, which is a part of WHO guidelines, Posse Bacillary is a patient who has 1 to 5 skin lesions without acid first bacteria. So nerve is not mentioned at all. That means there are no nerves. And multi Bacillary means more than 5 skin lesions are there, number one, with the nerve involvement. That means even if one nerve is involved, you have to give multi Bacillary treatment. And if you have smear positive, a still skin smear is positive, again, you have to give multibacillary treatment. So please remember in India, we are going to go with the national guidelines, the National Leprosy Eradication Program guidelines. And in terms of treatment also, there's a small difference. So possibacillary in NLEP, we give two drugs for six months. So two drugs for six months is what we're going to give. And multibacillary, we give three drugs for 12 months. Three drugs for 12 months. But according to WHO, what you need to remember is, there's a slight change. We are going to give three drugs for everybody. Whether it's POSI or multi, it doesn't matter. You have to give three drugs in POSI for six months. And for multi again, you give three drugs for 12 months. So I hope you got the difference here. The only difference here is here, the number of drugs are two in POSI bacillary, three in multi -bacillary. Whereas in WHO, you have to give three drugs for six months, three drugs for 12 months. So it's better to know both the guidelines, the national guidelines, as well as WHO guidelines. And we know which are the three important drugs in leprosy. We have rifampicin, which is 600 milligrams. Once a month, we give it. Number two, we have Dapsone, 100 milligram. Once a day, we give it. Number three, we have a drug called clofazamine which has got two doses. On the first day, we give half of the dose of rifampicin, which is 300 mg per month. And on day two to day 28, we give half the dose of Dapsone, which is 50 milligram every day. So this is the treatment, these are the drugs, and these are the guidelines. So the question is asking as per as National Leprosy Eradication Program, what you'd want to do, there is one now, there is one skin lesion and a satellite lesion. So it becomes posse bacillary. So the correct answer would be kit number A, which is green in color, you give it for six months as far as National Leprosy Eradication Program. Whereas kit number B, which is maroon in color, would have been for multi bacillary. For that, the number of skin lesions should be more than five. That should be six or more. And then the nerve involvement should be more than one nerve should be there. And then in terms of smear, smear should be positive. Then only we can give the maroon color kit. With this, we conclude our session on INICT previous question recall.